It's Cryptozoology Profile Time once again here on the channel. In this video, I will take a look at an amphibian-like humanoid which has been spotted on a number of occasions in a place known as Loveland. Loveland is the home rule municipality that is the second most populous municipality in Laramia County, Colorado, United States. Loveland is situated 46 miles north of the Colorado State Capitol in Denver. Known for its beautiful scenery, the area is something of a tourist trap. These people stopping to take in the view may just see something they weren't expecting and find even harder to explain. The Loveland Frogman. So let's take a look. Welcome to IF, videos on cryptozoology, ufology and the paranormal. Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss a video again. So who, what, and when has this cryptid been seen? Back in the heyday of disco, the year being 1972, a bizarre creature was seen on two separate occasions. The witnesses being local police officers giving credibility to what was reported. The name given for this cryptid, Frogman, a name which would stick. The report of what they saw goes as follows. In the early hours of the morning, around 1 a.m. to be exact, on March 3rd, 1972, a clear, sharply cold evening, Officer Ray Shockey was making his way to Loveland, traveling along Riverside Road. This is when he thought he saw an animal, possibly a dog, at the side of the road, in a field on Twightwee Road. It was then, to the surprise of the police officer, that this animal stood up. Its eyes were illuminated by the car lights. The strange beast quickly turned and looked at the officer, this before it again turned and leapt over a guardrail. The creature quickly ran with somewhat of a hopping motion down the embankment into the little Miami River found on the side of the road. The spooked public servant described what he saw. The man reported the animal he saw was around 60 pounds and stood at a height of approximately four feet. It had rough, leathery skin which reminded the officer of an amphibian or reptile. Not believing in what he had just seen and filled with self-doubt, the witness went back to his station and picked up a colleague to accompany him back to the location of the sighting. This so the police officer would know he wasn't losing his mind. Officer Mark Matthews helped to search for evidence of the creature. They discovered a number of scrape marks in the ground which led down to the side of the small hill which ran alongside the river. Hopping ahead by a few days, pun intended, to St. Patrick's Day of 1972, in a strange twist of fate, the police officer, Matthews, who went with the original witness to search for evidence of the Loveland Frogman, had his own sighting. The man, in a manner similar to the first sighting, saw an animal lying down, this time not in a nearby field but in the middle of the road. He stopped his patrol car and was about to remove what he thought was roadkill. He popped the door, which made an audible squeak as it opened. The sound startling the creature, which leapt up into a crouched position like a football player. Then, the strange, unidentifiable creature hobbled to the guardrail, lifted its leg over the fence, all while keeping an eye on Matthews, and then disappeared. The two officers were not the only witnesses in the Loveland locale. One area farmer told investigators that he had seen a large, frog-like or lizard-like creature during that same month. The investigation into what the man had seen uncovered a history of sightings that stretched back decades before the 1970s. The original report of the Loveland Frogmen occurred in 1955. A local man named Robert Honeycutt was the first recorded witness and in this first incident he did not see a single frogman but a group of three of the mysterious animals. The witness spotting the creatures in the early hours of the morning told of what he saw saying the animals were three feet tall, had lopsided chests, wide lipless mouths and wrinkles on their heads instead of hair. One of the beings held a rod shaped device above its head. This device shot out sparks. Could the frogman have technology? Could this point to an answer? Are these creatures possibly extraterrestrial visitors. Maybe another witness report could hold yet more clues. Just two short months after Honeycutt's sighting, a new witness, a one Emily Mangon, and her husband woke to the sounds of their dog barking loudly in their backyard. Thinking they may have an intruder, the couple went outside to see just what the dog was barking at. They were shocked to discover 
a three-foot-tall being that they said was covered in twigs and foliage. The security lights that were in the yard got tripped by the couple. This surprised the animal and it took off into the nearby brush. When the light cycled back off, the cryptid returned. Moving forward in time to 1999, a witness reported seeing a big green thing in the Little Miami River, the Little Miami River becoming a hotbed of frogman sightings. On July 4, 2002, Jude, Tillery, and a friend, Johnny H., reported seeing a big, frog-looking dude walk out of the river. They said it stole their food and then left. It is most likely that this report was just a hoax. Tillery and his friends had consumed a large amount of alcohol and were most likely drunk. The frogman would seem to live in the area of Loveland, so maybe the idea of them being alien visitors is wrong. If so, what could they be? Years after Mark Matthews reported his encounter, when asked about the story, he said he did not see a four-foot frogman, but a lizard. He said he fired at the lizard in hopes of validating Shockey's story, but did he really only see a lizard, or did he actually see a frogman and just change his story to avoid ridicule? The reports of the 1972 frogman had been hard on the witnesses. The two police officers took a lot of flack about the sighting. People made a lot of fun out of them. Years later, in 1999, during local media interviews, Mark Matthews explained that he was tired of talking about the frogman and that what he had seen was an iguana. But at the time, both witnesses definitely saw something like an upright, man-like lizard, about four feet tall. And then there is the matter of the sketch. Officer Shockey's sister drew it for them shortly after their experience with the creature, and it clearly looks like a giant frogman, a bipedal creature. During 2001, Weird Ohio did a follow-up investigation, re-interviewing principals, including asking Ron Schaffner about Matthew's attempts to pull back from his original story. Schaffner told us why after all these years is Matthew's debunking this story. I'm not sure. It could be for a number of reasons, but both officers told us that it resembled the sketch in 1976. Why would they show us a composite drawing of this creature back in 76 and then tell us that it looked like the drawing? I lived in Loveland for about five years, and the story is still circulating with many variations. Just maybe Matthews is tired of hearing the story and all these different retellings. We may never know what the Frogman really were, they remain one of the many mysterious creatures researched by cryptozoologists today. What do you think these witnesses saw? Do you have a frogman story? If so, let me know in the comments below. As always, if you like what I do here on the channel, hit that red button, like and share. You can catch the latest by searching We Are If. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.